So, um, you know, there's obviously a few people that uh, probably don't like my name, but um, <laughs> but for the most part, I'm very, very, very fortunate, very blessed. Everybody's still there and um, still sticking with me, and I couldn't be more grateful. Well, that's cool. Yeah, w w people I went to high school with, there might be like one or two <laughs> that are still here. You know, everybody else has moved. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. There's a few of them that have moved on, you know. But right. um, I still stay in touch, and um, you know, we. Uh, I don't know. I, I've been very fortunate to have great people around me for the better, better part of my life, and um, you know, you can always find something to complain about. But I, I uh, man, I, I'm doing very well um, with with this life, and I'm very, very, very proud of that. So. Now, I I was looking around a little bit to find out some stuff about you. Hope you don't mind. I don't mind a bit. <laughs> Stalk me all you want, Billy. Uh, <laughs> now, you are a portrait artist, mm -hmm. a woodworker, mm -hmm. an author. That's correct. A songwriter, a singer, guitar player. Did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I um. Yeah, I've, I've, I've written and published um, a number of books, five books now. Really? Um, yeah, and uh, some of them were children's books, and some of them were, um, you know, adult fiction, and, and you know, they, they, they did okay. Uh, my last one did pretty well, it's still available on Amazon, it's called Gabriel in the Woodlands, and uh, probably the one I'm most proud of, um, highly recommend it, great book. It's got five-star review and, and everything, but uh, yeah, I've, I've always been... Um, you know, trying to pursue the arts, and I don't want a real job, Billy. I just don't like, like, like you. I, I, I want to, I want to sit behind my microphone. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And so, anything I can do um, that's creative and imaginative and um, keeps me in the arts—that's what I've tried to do. That's cool. Now, how did you get into woodworking? Did you do that when you were younger, or? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, my grandpa was a, a builder over on the west side of Michigan, and then my dad was a builder, and he moved to the. To, uh, I'm sorry, my grandpa was on the east side, my dad moved to the west side, and then when I was uh, 18, I, I went ahead and got my builder's license, but I never finished high school. I got a, I, I, uh, my dad pulled me out uh, at the end of my eighth grade year and put me on job sites, so uh, my education was uh, very hands-on. Yeah. By the time I was 18, I was running you know, big crews for um, uh, big commercial operations um, out of uh, Muskegon, Michigan, and then when I moved to Nashville um, to pursue my music, I uh, started a carpenter company down there called um, GSFC, um, Gabe Shulman Fine Carpentry, and uh, that's uh, that was an amazing adventure. Um, I did very well with that and uh, um, learned a lot. Cool. That, now, is that what you do is carpentry, or do you do you have you ever dabbled in like artistic wood? Well. Um, so I haven't done carpentry in, in several years. Um, when, as a matter of fact, Nashville was about the last time I did it. Um, I, I, uh, I was very fortunate and got into the high-end carpentry market down there, and I hired people that were really, really, really talented artisans, carpenters. Okay. And um, we did a lot of big projects for, for different builders down there, but we did work for, on like Alan Jackson's house and um, all the ornate, you know, like uh, applique, woodwork, and. Uh, cabinetry and things like that. Uh, I had a specialty mill shop that, that did a lot of neat, you know, neat projects that would fall in the artisan category. And uh, I had 12 employees. I had, um, you know, um, and I was still I was out on the road playing music every weekend. Um, I had signed with a, a record label down there at the same time, so I was a workaholic doing yeah. 90 plus hours a week, and um, it caught up with me. You know, I find that a lot of artistic people are workaholics. Yeah. You know, they're always doing something. Or, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, we got to keep our mind busy. We don't want to get in there. <laughs> it's messy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So what, what, how old were you when you picked up your first guitar? I was 15 years old, and um, it came on the heels of a, uh, a church um project, we were doing an air band contest, and I'd never had anything to do with music at that point, and uh, um, I liked the feel of being in a band, even though it was an air band, you know, right. we had smoke bombs, we did uh, we, we did it upright, and, um, and uh, I said to the guys, I was like, man, why don't we start a real band, and they're like, we don't know how to play music, we've got to start somewhere, 
So we went and pawned off a bunch of uh, video games, and TVs, really? and stuff. Uh, we weren't even old enough to pawn anything. We had to have a friend's sister who just turned 18 <laughs> do it for us. And um, we even pawned off stuff that our parents were very unhappy that we did. But we bought enough uh, uh, guitars and amps and stuff to start a band. And like I think maybe three weeks later, we had a, a gig uh, opening up for a national act. So wow. I was a good salesman. Holy cow. <laughs> You must have been. <laughs> Holy cow. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, we were terrible, but... From we, ear guitar to... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that guy's still my friend, too. That's John Cox out of Nashville. He's one of the... One, he's a godfather of Christian rock and roll, man. He's, he's amazing. If you get a chance to listen to some of his music, he's incredible. I'll check him out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, let me see here. What, what was it? that piqued your interest in music? Was it that, that performance or? Um, well, you know, it's 15, 16, you know, straight in there. And um, I mean, if you've got a guitar and um, you don't even have to look cool, you don't even have to be handsome or nothing. <laughs> and girls just loved you. So ah, there was that the motivating, there was a motivating factor <laughs> there. But also, um, you know, I, I, I I had heroes, you know, that I looked at. Ben Folds, Ben Folds Five, you know. Like um, I looked at those guys, and um, you know, especially songwriters, they 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 just they didn't hesitate to, to put themselves out there in a way that I was really envious of. So um, anybody that was real and sincere and honest and wasn't a part of like the system, really inspired me, and um, I uh, I wanted to do that. I decided I wanted to do that. And did you start songwriting? Yeah. Quickly? Or? Yeah, pretty much right out the gate. I always said I'm not talented enough to play other people's music. <laughs> I do play other people's music when I play my shows and stuff, but... Um, but you have to sound like... Yeah. It sounds like this. Okay, I can't do that. It was much easier to sit down and strum a, strum a, a chord and, and put a melody and a couple lyrics over it than it was to sit down and try to figure <laughs> out the riff, you know, get some like yeah. Blink-182 song or something. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Easier to write my own. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> Whatever you say. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that would disagree with that. That's probably true. But it work, <laughs> that's what works for me. So. <laughs> Do you play any other instruments? Or? Yeah, I hesitate to say that, and it depends on what crowd I'm with that I'd say that. But yeah, I play, um, um, you know, about every instrument in the band. So really? bass, drums, uh, even keys. Uh, I've written quite a few songs on keys, and then. Um, uh, I played uh, like uh, um, saxophone and stuff in the band and when I was uh, younger. I don't think I could get through it now, but yeah. I used to. <laughs> but you know the basics of it. I know the basics of it all, yeah. Um, I, could, I could hold a week-long camp for uh, amateur or entry-level uh, <laughs> you know, people that wanted to learn how to play the <laughs> basics of those instruments, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, Now, when you started writing songs, had you written stories before that, or vice versa? Yeah, I'd say that's actually a really good question. Probably something I haven't thought about. I, I, um, you know, everybody's got a story and a background, you know, that maybe maybe had you know is rooted in trauma or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, my mine was pretty, you know, it was pretty good. It was right up there with the best of them, but. Um, I started writing stories um, as just a you know form of expression, just to you know start getting some of what's in my head out, and um, that helped a lot. I, I it became very addicting. I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. I just right. had notebooks, you know, I would fill up, and um, and um, it became very addictive. So songwriting was definitely that that you know logical next step um, for me, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think I wrote before that. So you kind of evolved from a, a story writer into a songwriter. Yeah. And are they totally different, or are there la overlaps? Or? I, you know, I have a theory on that. My, my, I think they are um, different in a sense, obviously. You've got to use a lot more words to tell you know, a story. And, and um, a song is such a condensed, you know, you've got to tell as much of the story as you can with as little amount of words as possible. Yeah, and that's, that's the a challenge. Good point. Yeah. So I um, 
I definitely had to learn how to do that, you know, and, um, but in doing that, you realize that there's a lot of words that are just unnecessary, a lot of things that we say, you know, even, even now in this conversation, we could probably condense it down to like 30 seconds and right. get the point across, but I love talking as well, so. Um, I, I, I think that uh, so songwriting, storytelling, um, very, very similar, but the creative process is the same. It doesn't matter if you're a sculptor, a painter, an author, or anything. It all, you know, starts from your imagination. And if you can, if you can envision it, you can do it. So that's. Yeah, that's is is there some place that you go, whether physically go or mentally go, to spur on your your creativity when you're writing or something? Um, man, I. I would, I'd like to say that I do because I think it would, it, it would sound more magical. Um, but uh, I, write, I write songs very quickly um, and, and about everything that happens in my life and people. I'll probably write a song about you, really. I, I, uh, I right. you know, that's the, um, you know, that's my medicine. That's, that's um, you know, so sometimes my songs are only 30 seconds long and I'll just record them on my phone and then, and then they'll be done. Um, but I can do that anywhere, anytime, um, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's not necessarily something I have to escape to do, I just have to observe. Right. Can we hear an example of one of your songs? Yeah, you want to? Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Um, I'll play, uh, I'm sure, uh, Mallory is out there chomping at the bit, she, she's always saying, you talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I um I have a uh, I've had in the past I've had you know a lot of lady problems. So uh, there was one lady that um, you know very nice lady. I don't want to trash her too much, but we had we had that toxic you know kind of relationship going on. And, um, very 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 toxic, very bad, but a lot of fun really. Um, and uh, and uh, so anyway, somebody said, hey Gabe, why are you messing around with that girl? You know, don't do it. And, and I did it anyway, and um, and uh, I did a painting for her, and she ended up not liking me, and she destroyed the painting. And, uh, oh, no. and very hurtful, very hurtful. But I wrote a song about it, so I'll play that one if that's okay. As long as yeah. we're talking about stories. That sounds good. Set it up. And he sat me down to question why I'm playing the fool He said she's a wanderer A broken heart like death was sure That pretty girl would leave me in ruins yeah, If you're gonna love some Lose some The broken hearts Some are no fun Falling in love again Is a, a sure cure for the blues It'll Get you a thick started doing the show, or I don't even know how many years ago it's been, but uh, I was saying, oh, that's good stuff, and I, I never realized how much I said it, but somebody called and said, yeah, you know how you say good stuff all the time? I, um, <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then 
we made a game out of it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah, every time you say good stuff, you take a drink. I go, okay. Awesome, yeah. so, so that's why, and if I don't say it enough, I'll get a phone call. Say, hey, uh, you haven't said it here. What's going on? <laughs> okay, we'll get right to it. They're getting dry, Billy. You got to keep so, them. You got to so keep them. You want to join in too? Yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, what was the name of that one now? Um, I Broken Hearts ain't no fun at all. I guess would probably be the logical. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Broken Hearts ain't no fun at all. They ain't no fun at all, but they're definitely a, um, you know, like my dad says, there's no such thing as a free education. So. <laughs> but you got a song out of it. I got the important. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I, somebody, you're not the first one that told me hey, you'll probably be on, end up in a song. I have. Okay, you know. And your friends say, don't write about that. Don't write about that. <laughs> Man, I, um, yeah, yeah, they actually do. Um, they'll say, don't you dare put me in a song, Gabe. Um, and, uh, or don't put that in a song, Gabe. And um, and sometimes I'll write people into songs without you know without telling them that that that's about them or anything, right. or even announcing to the world like, hey, I wrote this about my friend. And um, uh, you know, for instance, the, I, I gave you the CD for uh, Sophie Coyote, right? You right. Know? Yeah. Great songwriter, a phenomenal songwriter. Um, honestly, like one of, one of the best songwriters I've come across in a very long time. And um, obviously very beautiful, you know, intelligent, great businesswoman and everything like that. But I was so impressed with her songs. I wrote a song about her, and it's called She's a Songwriter. And I didn't tell her it was about her. I didn't tell anybody it was about her. But, you know, um, that was my way of, you know, just documenting it historically. <laughs> like, uh, this is a person that has influenced me heavily, and, you know, I want to make sure I get that on paper. So, How old is she? Any idea? How old is she? Yeah. I, I 21. I was going to say, yeah. Jody, who you know, Jody Miguel. Yeah. She has mentioned her several times to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've checked out a few of her songs online. I thought, wow, she is really good. Yeah. But she looked very young. I thought, wow. Yeah, yeah. She's talented and she looks like she's pretty young, too. Everybody that knows her refers to her as an old soul, and you can hear it in her music. I mean, it just yeah. sounds like she's, um, you know, from that, that bygone era of, of, like, real sincere, hurtful country music, you know, real painful stuff. And um, gosh, it's so convincing. You would never think that she's this, <laughs> you know, she's. You know, this young artist, but um, but she is, and she's doing an amazing job with it. I'm, I'm um, you know, very, very impressed with her. So, but big influence, and yeah, I wanted to write a song about her. So, um, and it's not anything big or doting. It's not a love song or anything right. like that. It's just like, man, she's a songwriter, and it's an amazing thing. So, yeah. Do you have do you have anybody from back home that you influenced your writing or your songwriting? Like that I influenced personally, or that they yeah, influenced? You were influenced. Oh, by. oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mentioned John Cox. Right, um, right. Yeah, you know, he's an amazing, amazing songwriter, and I've written songs with him um, even. But, uh, um, but yeah, yeah. Back home, there's, there's, um, you know, there's, there's this man. There's this weird pocket in West Michigan of the greatest musicians that I have ever seen in my life. Really? It, it, unbelievable, Billy. Uh, Luke Gitchell, um, he used to play uh, with Dolly Parton down at like Dollywood and stuff, and, and um, he's from West Michigan, and he moved back from Tennessee, and he lives there, and he surrounded himself with, and like a magnet, you know how like when ener energies draw like yeah. energies, yeah, and um, so it just, people started gravitating towards him, and um, he's got this group of people around him that are just the greatest I've ever seen and um, he's probably one of the best guitar players I've ever seen heavily influenced by him if just you know just his his presence his essence you know what he what he's all about I don't necessarily think his music has influenced me but he has um, and then um, yeah there's you know there's a couple of those old timers those old school bar guys that are just right. gosh man you know they don't get near the credit they deserve you know some it's, of the most amazing guys 
and girls too. I mean, yeah. that I've seen play, I think, wow, they're fantastic. Yeah. And I can't believe everybody doesn't know them. You know, but you no, know, I play here once a month. You know, yeah. And that's a I go, wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's pretty amazing when you think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I, I, a good friend of mine in the music industry told me a long time ago. He said. Music chooses you, it, you know, it's not the other way around. And once it chooses you, it, you're not going to get away from it. No matter how hard you try, you might as well just embrace it and, and roll with it. So uh, That's a good point right there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have to take a little break here, and uh, we'll come back with more from Gabe Shillman after these messages. Uh, that's good stuff. It's good stuff. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a cool thing. <laughs> I've, uh, I put a post up. Tagging you in it. People seem to be, uh... Oh, really? Skin Institute in Clinton is having a free cancer screening this Wednesday. If you have any moles or spots that have changed in size, shape, or color, have irregular borders, vary in color, or a larger <laughs> pencil eraser, you should get checked. Is that going okay? Early detection yeah. Is that going all right? Skin yeah. cancer survival rate if there's anything you want to talk about, about spreads. Okay. Come to the free yeah. skin cancer screening. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it just how it's going. Skin it's skin right, right. 2027, 21st Street. 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 I want to at least ask people uh, follow me on Spotify or something like that. I just I never put much effort into Spotify, so I only I have a very really low followers on there. I want to try to build that up. You know, in you the coming, it, coming months, but um, otherwise, I'm, I'm just enjoying myself. Appreciate you letting me be here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she, she, that Sophie girl, man. Um, I think she played. Uh, she'll this year. She'll be on on track to do a little over 200 shows. And it's not like she's an amazing guitar player. It, 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 it's um, she just has a, a presence about it. People, you know, as soon as she starts singing, people are like, like you've never heard that note before. So. Um, and there's, there's quite a few people out of that area. I mean, Marcus Morrell obviously yeah. is, you yeah. know, doing things. That's another quick, like, you know, the, like, well, you like to say, like a magnet. They're drawn to yep. a place for whatever reason. Do you know Scott Rishi? By name. Yeah. Uh, his, his nieces and nephews are uh, Willie May. Uh, we are your local coral spill and generac dealer. We carry lawnmowers, pressure washers, generators, <laughs> and all the accessories. Willie May signed a contract with Jack White. Oh, cool. He invited her and he produced her first album. Here's your forecast for the Mac 94 Wow, yeah. Absolutely. And she's out of the Midwest? Yeah. She's out of the Midwest. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which I'm, I'm very grateful for. I, uh, I, I I didn't have that on the schedule, so it's kind of a last minute booking. But right. um, if you're listening and um, uh, you know don't have much going on tonight, come on out. It, I, I I think you'll appreciate it, and I would love to meet you. So yeah, for sure. Do you have any CDs with you? Jake? Good. I'm, I sold out all my merch and all my CDs, yeah. and um, I got it all on order now. I'm just waiting for it to come in. So um, you can still get an autograph. I, uh, we were talking about business sense, and uh, <laughs> you know, I wait until my merch is all gone, and then uh, well, and then kick a, to be people. honest, I would do the same thing because that that's the way I am. Yeah. Right? So I um, yeah, so I've got a little lull right right now as far as that goes, but uh, I'll I'll still be down there, and um, you know, I, I I'm not opposed to somebody buying me a drink. I'm just not. So, well, that's one thing you don't know about the beer. They don't sell any drinks or food, but you can bring your own. Oh, in. okay. Well, there you go. Bring it in. Right. So reminder, people, if you want something to drink or eat, bring it in with you, and she allows anything to come in. Yeah. There you go bucket of chicken or whatever, just so you can share it, you know. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, could we talk just a little bit about your uh, your book, Gabriel and the Woodlands? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I was living down in Nashville, Tennessee when I wrote that, and um, Michigan is where I grew up, that was, that was my home, and... Um, you know, woods and water and, and nature and you know, like mushroom hunting. You guys do you guys hunt for morales around sure. here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that, like all of those things were big parts of my upbringing. And then I get down into Nashville, and I'm in the city. You know, and um, it, it just wasn't um, wasn't the same, obviously. Right. So I, I wanted to write a story that kind of captured the essence of Michigan and um, you know everything that I loved about it and. Um, the, the, the logical step for that was, you know, to, a, an adventure story, but um, I had to shrink my characters down very, very small, and um, these woodland characters are just, um, you know, about the size of a chipmunk, and, and they camouflage perfectly in the woods, but it, big adventures, you know, sword fights and, um, you know, flying on the backs of, uh, of eagles and stuff, and... Uh, it, it puts your mind into that, you know, that childlike imaginative state where you just... You just have fun being imaginative, and it's it's been a great book. It's done well for me. Great reviews, um, five stars on Amazon, and um, I love that book. The only complaint that I ever had about that book is that there's not a follow up. So, or is it in the works? Maybe? Man, it should be. It should be, <laughs> but it's not. Unfortunately, you, Billy. You, uh, done some short stories online, right? Man, you really did your research. I uh, I did. I wrote a series of short stories in promotion of that book. And, oh, I um, see. And, so uh, they came before the book? They came or about the same about time. The same time. Okay. Yeah, about the same time. So uh, I wrote those short stories, and um, I actually just went back and revisited them not too long ago, and I was like, man, that, it's such a fun adventure. It's such a fun story. So... Uh, I do need to write a follow-up book, and I will. Um, I just want it to be sincere, and I want it to have the, the time, you know, that it needs to, right. to do it right. And I spend, you know, maybe three days a week at home, you know, and then I'm back out on the road. So it's uh, it's not like I, you know, get home and I'm fresh and I'm, you know, <laughs> ready to sit down and write, you know, a big long story. It takes me a day or two to recoup, and oh, then, I'm sure. you know, and then I'm heading back out. So. I just, it's all excuses, it's laziness, and, um... At the same time, they're <laughs> believable, totally believable, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would, I don't, I could not do the touring lifestyle. I just, oh my God. It, a day or two, I, uh, like, even on vacation, I go, oh, you ready to go back home? <laughs> or something. My wife, we just got here, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, you need a vacation from your vacation usually. Right, exactly. I, I don't know, um, you know, there's guy, obviously guys out there that are doing it way more rigorously than I am. And, um, you know, I'm still doing it. Yeah, I'm still traveling in my car. I'm still, you know, a one-man band. I, I, you know, streamlined it, simplified it. It's just me and my guitar. And, um, you know, I, I, I've got friends all over the place, so I get to 
you know, I don't have to stay at a hotel if I don't want to. I can right. call them up and they're usually very, very happy to have me. But at the same time, you know, crashing on people's couches and stuff can get old a little bit. Yeah. You just want a little ho hotel. Yeah, get a big box of chocolates and, and watch uh, soap operas or something. In your underwear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so sometimes you know that 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 can get a little bit uh, hard. But I I never want to do anything other than what I'm doing. So you know I I'm not going to complain too much about it. Right, right. Yeah. You know why complain? Because when you're complaining, you're complaining about something you're doing. Well, don't do it anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's the answer. You know, so quit complaining. Yeah, yeah. Jim Rohn, uh, who's a you know big public speaker, uh, motivational guy from the '80s and uh, maybe '90s a little bit, but he used to you know talk about people that would complain about their life and you know like, oh, I, I really wanted to live in this area, and he's like, you're not a tree. Right. You can move. Exactly. You can make that decision and. Um, I've had to make that decision a few times in my life where, like, yeah, I'm going to do this and it's going to probably hurt some feelings and, you know, it's not ideal, but that's what I want to do, so right. I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah. Ready for another song? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. I'll, uh, I'll play one from um, the EP that came out in, uh, in 2020. Good year. Great year for music. <laughs> um, for sure. Yeah, right, be right before the pandemic hit, uh, the, the EP Born of, Born of Flame came out and... Um, this song uh, is probably my favorite song on there, and um, it's called Cold Dark Beer, so um, i play that one. On the bar seat there's a stranger in silence, sipping dark beer, and there's a quiet pain inside his old blue eyes. They ask if he's from this town, he just shakes his head and looks down. No, but I knew a girl one time It seems he fell in love once with a girl who loved for six months Before running off to chase her dreams and doubts And he's been sitting here waiting, hoping, praying for the day When she walks through the door that she walked out And on that thought he sighs he says, I'm just what she's after A little heart thump, a little laughter A little light em up and throw em back Here's the life Those late nights and those good times Are gonna get old, she's gonna think twice And she'll come running home to be my wife And I'll be waiting right here Behind this cold dark beer And I'll be waiting right here dark beer I look up at the bar mirror realize there's no one else here and that stranger on the bar stool looks like me but he's looking so much older on camp of fallen shoulders and those eyes are dark like they ain't slept in weeks Someone told me to move on Except the fact that you're gone But I've got faith you'll be back someday If I can hold on a little longer If I can just be a little stronger Then I'll get that chance to see your face And on that thought I sigh Yeah, I'm just what you're after A little heart thump, a little laughter A little light them up and throw them back Here's the light And you'll come running home to be my wife And I'll be waiting right here Behind this cold dark beer And I'll be waiting right here Behind this cold dark beer And I'll be waiting right here Behind this cold dark beer that song I've listened to it from your album today. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank Good you. stuff. Yeah, it's been a crowd favorite, and um, surprisingly, like a lot of people relate to uh, the message that's in that song, which is fantastic. I love that. So yeah, always means a lot, you know, when somebody comes up and says it sincerely, like, man, <laughs> I understand that song. It really speaks to me. So that's I think it, what any songwriter wants to hear. Yeah. For oh, for sure. Yeah. Kind of validates you. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I need all that validation I can get. <laughs> I personally, I can sit behind a cold, dark beer just about any. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, let me see. Do you have anything coming up in the area, the general area? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Um, let me think about that for a second. I think next um, next week I'm going to be um, back in uh, Wisconsin. I'm playing like um, the Pink Heifer up in Monticello, I know is one of them, H's place. Um, Coach's Golf and Grill over in Lena. Um, uh, th those, man. The greatest people, and, and they've been there for me for so long and supported me. Um, great venue to play. Coaches Golf and Grill for sure. Um, Sugar Bakers in uh, in Lena as well. I know um, I know those are all coming up. I just don't know the dates that they mm -hmm. are. And then so you can uh, find them online. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel and Ray's up in uh, Blanchardville, and then um, I think I've got um, you know some stuff in Michigan. Um, uh, uh, this place called uh, Berlin Sprig, and it's just an amazing place in Muskegon, Michigan. And I think that might be my next show, like this Thursday. I think that's my next show is this Thursday. So I'll be back in Michigan for one night only, and then coming right back into the, you know more of the Midwest. So just going wherever they'll have me, Billy. No relax. <laughs> just go. <laughs> yeah, wherever they'll have me. Well, that I mean, it, you got to keep busy yeah. as a musician, especially. Because if you take a month off, oh, it's hard to people recover. say, who is that? Yep. You know, it's like, you know, he's been here ten times in the last year. Yeah. You know? like, but yeah, people are seem to be kind of fickle. They are very fickle. And we talked about that a little bit off the air in uh, 2020. You know, like yeah. there were these great artists that were just getting ready to break loose. And then, uh, you know, the uh, yeah, pandemic hit and then you never heard from them again. Mm -hmm. you know? They all got jobs at other places and stuff. So... Um, that almost happened to um, uh, a big country band called Runaway June. You know, like they, they, you know, they were really breaking loose, and then the pandemic hit, and you didn't hear from them at all. And I was really afraid that they weren't going to come back. You know, um, but now they're back out on the road again. You know, trying to pick up momentum. But. And to be honest, people that have gotten COVID, do you know Jill Jack? No, I don't. She's from Detroit, but. She's a she's a musician and she she was playing she got COVID and she this was like a year and a half ago she got COVID and she recovered and she started a tour and like two or three yeah. uh, shows into it she had to cancel the rest because she's got long COVID yeah and she says I, I get up there and I can't breathe yeah you know? yeah. Like, what a shame, you know. So who knows, you know, that could be behind some of it. And, and you know, I hate to say it, but it's it's kind of like it's not gone yet. Yeah. What the heck is going on? Yeah. Oh I don't know. I I the one thing I can say about all of this is it puts so much stuff in perspective, and yeah, you've got one sure. life. You know, I've lost a lot of great friends, and um, you know, every friend you lose, you almost feel like you're 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 living for them now. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you're you're um, you know, a certain amount of your efforts have to be dedicated towards the people that you've lost and other people that can't do it anymore or um, anything like that. But uh, I I uh, I feel very fortunate that I'm still able to do this. I'm 41 years old. You know, there's not very many you know people my age they're still doing this professionally um the way that i am and uh, i'm very grateful for that and i'm also um you know so I, I just i'm trying to look at my life and go what's great about it and let's focus on that you know and what's right. great about my career and let's focus on that and um, not you know my lacking or what i'm not you know able to do or um you know i, I told myself for a long time i've aged out oh, i'm aged out you know like, <laughs> That's that's not true. You never aged out of music. Think about Mick Jagger and Keith. Yeah, yeah. they're still going. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who to thunk? No, Keith. <laughs> Keith, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but hey, do you have any uh, 
advice for songwriters. Now I've had other people in here. They they said things like, uh, oh, you have to be true to yourself. You have to uh, don't let anybody else tell you how to write a song. Sometimes other people can give you confidence and direction, but songwriting and originality come from within. Yeah, I think that's pretty solid. That's um, that's exactly right, and especially nowadays, and more than ever, like we've almost gone back to like the honesty and sincerity of the '60s, um, or, or you know that like that, that just just putting it out there, you know, real Paul Simon kind of like here I am, and um, now that's what everybody's craving is like sincerity and yeah. originality and are you real then i like you it, are you faking it then i don't really want anything to do with you and like the, the mood has changed they want they want that honesty and um um you know that that's that's fantastic i love that so i'd say as far as a songwriter goes if you're going to write a song you know even if it's a fictional song find some element within you that you can identify in that song like you can you can go it's personalized because I, I there's that that one little heartbeat that is me in this fictional song, and um, you know it's so important to have you know a part of you in everything you write, not just write, you know like because it's the right tempo and it's the right chords and it's right. you know like we're manufacturing a song to make it commercially viable, just write honestly. And I'm I'm really glad to hear you compare it to the '60s because. I was alive in the 60s, and there was so much going on. I mean, song after song after song, and hundreds, thousands of artists out there. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's very similar to that now, it's, because there are tons of people out, out trying to make it yeah. in the music business right now. It's breaking loose in the biggest way, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be you know, part of it, even if I'm on the tail end of it, um, as far as, you know, m my contribution. Um, well, I don't think I'm on the tail end of it, but I'm not, I'm not, right. I know that. I'm not Sophie Coyote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's, um, it's just amazing to see because the, I obviously wasn't alive in the 60s, but I can look at that era and go, everything sounded different. You know, like, yeah. even the rock bands didn't sound like each other. Exactly. You know, they were, it was yeah. so different and so original. And, um, I think we're getting into that a little bit. Now. I do too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, uh, can you do another song? Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, this uh, this one is a uh, little bit different than what I normally write, and um, kind of the old thought process for me. But people tend tend to like it, and it's called "I'm Certain I Should Change." Sometimes I shoot off at the mouth and regret what I say And then I overanalyze and live in shame for days I should say I'm sorry and beg forgiveness for my lowly ways If the only one I'm hurting is me and I'm certain I should change I don't have many friends and that's no one's fault but mine People send me invites, I've a new excuse each time I should say I'm sorry and beg forgiveness for my lowly ways If the only one I'm hurting is me and I'm certain I should change Beg forgiveness for the times I ignored your pain Beg forgiveness for the fire not praying down the rain Beg forgiveness for the moon and not reaching for the stars Beg forgiveness for the times my failures left you scarred Just know that I'll be walking through life in shame and The only one I'm hurting is me And I'm certain I should change I kicked out a friend in the time he was in need his life was in sadness, now his sadness lives with me. I should say I'm sorry for their forgiveness for my lowly ways. The only one I'm hurting is me, and I'm certain I should change. 
forgiveness for the times I ignored your pain. Beg forgiveness for the fire not breaking down the rain. Beg forgiveness for the moon and not reaching for the stars. Beg forgiveness for the times my failures left you scarred. Just now that I'll be walking through life in shame. The only one I'm hurting is me, and I'm certain I should change. Make a lot of promises, I do my best to keep, but ultimately I let down the people close to me. Yeah, I should say I'm sorry and beg forgiveness for my lowly ways. The only one I'm hurting is me, and I'm certain I should change. Alright. Good stuff. <laughs> I'm sure the, the buttery cobs would agree. Good stuff. <laughs> They're in Dusty's Frog Pond right now. So. Oh, is this the Frog Posh reference? Frog, frog, <laughs> frog Pond reference. That's, that's where they're hanging out today. And a shout out to Sherry Californian who's listening out there. I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, Gabe, I, I really appreciate it that you came in. And yeah. It's been nice meeting you. And Absolute pleasure. Fantastic. It's kind of a legend. So, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, I really do, and good luck, best wishes in everything you do. Yeah. And can we have one more song and then we'll get out of here? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, Don't forget, he's going down to The View, downtown Clinton, right after this, so be there. Yeah, come on down to The View. This is a song about my favorite little town, Lena, Illinois. Shout out to all my friends in Lena. Always hard to leave Lena. Where's their own lies? Cemetery on a hilltop where an old friend resides. The trouble with hello is that coming goodbye.
KMCN, at 947 FM with Nylon. When this is the sound of a waterfall in nature, there's no cause for concern. <laughs> 